Ethiopian Bible holds a place of intrigue and contention, being regarded as one of the most mysterious and debated texts in history. Its existence is intertwined with a country veiled in strange tales that defy conventional explanation. Ethiopia, a land rich in history and tradition, is a realm where mysteries abound, deeply rooted in its cultural fabric. Ethiopia stands as the cradle of one of the earliest civilizations globally, boasting a rich history untouched by the powers that shaped much of Africa's past. This unique status has allowed Ethiopians to proudly trace their ancestry back to Ham, one of Noah's sons, showcasing a lineage that spans generations. Notably, this historical narrative is not merely folklore, but has garnered support from various communities, further solidifying Ethiopia's deep-rooted connection to ancient biblical times. In this discourse, the focus lies not on the nation, but on the prohibitions surrounding the Ethiopian Bible, the pioneering illustrated Christian scripture globally. Ethiopia possesses a collection of Bible scrolls that date back to ancient times, surpassing even the well-known King James Version Bible in terms of age. These ancient Ethiopian scrolls are considered some of the oldest existing biblical manuscripts globally, predating various other Bibles and scriptures. In addition to the 66 books found in the King James Bible, the Ethiopic Bible stands out with its collection of 88 books, encompassing a wider range of texts that are not part of other church canons. The ancient book comprises a collection of scrolls originating from not only the Old Testament and the New Testament, but also includes scrolls that were previously unknown. The intriguing aspect lies in the fact that these scrolls were in possession long before the advent of Christianity in their community during the 4th century. This discovery sheds light on a pre-Christian era that existed within their society, showcasing a historical timeline that predates the widespread influence of Christianity. In essence, Christianity did not arrive in Ethiopia as a foreign religion imposed on its people, as was the case with many other nations. Instead, Christianity had taken root in Ethiopia long before, dating back to ancient times. The history of Christian faith in Ethiopia spans back to the 4th century, marking the nation as one of the oldest Christian civilizations in the world. During the mid-6th century, the renowned Egyptian traveller, monk and historian known as Cosmos Indicopleustes documented his visit to Ethiopia, indicating that the country was primarily Christian at that time. His observations revealed a notable aspect of Ethiopia's history, wherein the rulers displayed an open-door policy towards Christian refugees seeking sanctuary from persecution inflicted by regimes and empires hostile to the Christian faith. This historical account sheds light on the significant role played by Ethiopia as a safe haven for those fleeing religious hardships during that era. In the realm of religious history, specific Ethiopian ethnic groups have devoted themselves to the Christian deity for an astonishing span of 3,500 years. This fact unveils a remarkable revelation counter to the widely propagated belief by mainstream media, challenging the misconception that the oldest established Christian entity is under the umbrella of the Catholic ministry. The Ethiopian Orthodox Church, recognized locally as Tewado, emerges as a profound symbol of enduring faith and tradition within the cultural tapestry of Ethiopia. Ethiopia is home to one of the oldest known illustrated Christian scriptures, a significant part of the Gospels documented in Gaez, an ancient Ethiopian language. Discovered in 2010 within a monastery perched atop a mountain in Ethiopia, this historical artifact holds great cultural and religious importance. This ancient South Semitic language, with its deep roots in Ethiopian heritage, adds a unique dimension to the country's rich religious history. In the Kebra Nagast, considered Ethiopia's sacred text, there exists an account dating back to the 10th century BC, where an Ethiopian monarch and the renowned biblical figure, Queen of Sheba, embarked on a journey to seek counsel from the legendary King Solomon in Jerusalem. This narrative finds its place even within the recognized Bible canon. However, a lesser-known aspect, not explicitly detailed in the Bible, reveals that these two rulers bore a son named Menelik through their union. Queen of Sheba subsequently returned to Ethiopia with the child, who eventually ascended to become the inaugural emperor of the region. This historical passage not only sheds light on the diplomatic engagement between these significant figures, but also underscores the dynastic origins of Ethiopian monarchy, enriching our understanding of the intricate interplay of biblical and Ethiopian narratives. 
Through genetic analysis conducted in 2012, researchers delved into the genetic composition of numerous Ethiopians, unearthing compelling indications that lend credence to the legendary journey of Sheba to Jerusalem and the subsequent birth believed to have taken place there. It is theorized that individuals of Egyptian or Syrian descent intermingled with the indigenous Ethiopian population approximately 3,000 years ago. This historical intermingling is purported to have occurred during the reign of a queen who governed the kingdom of Sheba, thus adding further weight to the narrative. The findings from this genetic exploration provide a glimpse into the interconnectedness of various ancient societies, shedding light on the complexities of their historical interactions and cultural exchanges. Abba Garima, who was one of the nine saints, created an Orthodox church in Ethiopia in the 6th century. The Ethiopian church was built by King Mascal. The church is called Abba Garima Monastery. Inside the monastery were two Garima Gospels, Garima I and Garima II. The Garima Gospels had a manuscript that was used in the year 500. Judging by the year the manuscript was composed, it has been noted by historians that this is the oldest and most complete Gospel book. Abba Garima, whom the Gospel book was named after, didn't originate from Ethiopia. History has it that he migrated to Ethiopia from Syria in 494 CE. His arrival at Ethiopia didn't come in silence as his name soon spread like a wildfire. Abba Garima, who was a Christian, began to perform what seemed like a miracle to the people of Aksum. He healed the sick and turned the people of Aksum to Christians. It was during this time history reported that Abba Garima started writing and completed the Gospel book. History also revealed that the Garima Gospel was written in a single day. However, one question is that, how was this possible? It was said that the sun refused to set until the book was completed. This was believed to be a sign that God loved Abba Garima. One report states that the images, symbols and writings were that of Egyptian. This isn't an issue as the book has now been translated. One interesting thing to note is that this book is full of mysteries. Apart from the fact that the book could be regarded as the first version of bookbinding, the book has withstood a lot of tragedies and environmental disasters. Some of these are fires and invasions. The Abagarima Monastery Church was engulfed in fire in the year 1930 and badly damaged the building. Interestingly though, the book didn't go down with the flames. This has caused some to suggest that the book is protected by God. It's currently displayed inside a glass case in the Monastery Church in Ethiopia. The Mystery of the Burning of the Library of Alexandria The burning of the Library of Alexandria stands as one of the most tragic events in the history of human civilization, symbolizing the loss of ancient knowledge and wisdom on an unprecedented scale. Situated in the illustrious city of Alexandria, Egypt, the library was a beacon of learning and scholarship, attracting scholars, philosophers and thinkers from across the ancient world. Its destruction shrouded in myth and speculation, continues to haunt historians and scholars to this day, serving as a stark reminder of the fragility of human knowledge and the perils of ignorance. Founded in the 3rd century BCE by Ptolemy II Philadelphus, the Library of Alexandria quickly rose to prominence as a center of intellectual inquiry and cultural exchange. Under the patronage of the Ptolemaic dynasty, the library became a repository of the world's knowledge, housing thousands of scrolls, manuscripts and treatises on a wide range of subjects, from mathematics and astronomy to philosophy and medicine. Scholars from Greece, Egypt, Persia and beyond flocked to Alexandria to study in its hallowed halls, contributing to a flourishing of intellectual and artistic achievement unparalleled in the ancient world. However, the glory of the library was not to last. In 48 BCE, during the tumultuous reign of Julius Caesar, the library fell victim to the ravages of war. According to some accounts, Caesar's forces accidentally set fire to the library during the siege of Alexandria, resulting in the destruction of a significant portion of its priceless collection. While the exact circumstances surrounding the fire remain shrouded in mystery, the loss of the library's treasures was a devastating blow to the intellectual heritage of humanity. Despite the destruction wrought by Caesar's forces, the Library of Alexandria was not completely obliterated. In the centuries that followed, subsequent rulers and conquerors sought to revive the spirit of learning and scholarship that had once animated the city. 
Under the patronage of Roman emperors and Byzantine rulers, Alexandria remained a center of learning and culture, albeit diminished in stature compared to its illustrious past. Yet, the memory of the great library lived on, inspiring generations of scholars and thinkers to strive for the preservation and dissemination of knowledge. In the centuries that followed, the legend of the burning of the Library of Alexandria took on a life of its own, fueling speculation and controversy among historians and scholars. Some historians have questioned the extent of the damage inflicted upon the library, suggesting that it may have been a gradual decline rather than a sudden cataclysmic event. Others have proposed alternative theories, attributing the destruction of the library to religious intolerance, political intrigue, or deliberate acts of vandalism by religious zealots. Regardless of the exact circumstances, the burning of the Library of Alexandria remains a potent symbol of the dangers of intellectual censorship and cultural destruction. The loss of the library's treasures deprived humanity of countless works of literature, philosophy, and science, setting back the progress of human knowledge by centuries. Yet, even in the face of such adversity, the spirit of inquiry and scholarship persevered as new centers of learning emerged to carry on the legacy of Alexandria. In the modern era, the story of the burning of the Library of Alexandria continues to resonate with scholars and intellectuals around the world. It serves as a cautionary tale against the dangers of ignorance and intolerance, reminding us of the importance of preserving and protecting our cultural heritage for future generations. As we strive to build a brighter future, let us not forget the lessons of the past, lest we repeat the mistakes that led to the loss of one of humanity's greatest treasures. So, what do you make of this mysterious book? Be sure to leave your questions and answers in the comment section below and help us to grow this community while working to solve these unexplained mysteries. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more videos.